Greetings, viewers, and welcome to today's info sharing snippet. We will be covering the various grids and filter options within Sage 200 Evolution. Now, within Sage 200 Evolution, we have the ability to use a very unique and detailed search facility, as well as the ability to customize the grid screens and the lookup fields when processing transactions. So firstly, if you look in the top left-hand corner of the screen, you've got a filter option, which allows you from any place within the application to go find reports, processing screens, etc. It's really quite simple. So for example, under the filter option, I'm just going to, for example, say age analysis. And as you can see, it gives me a details of all the areas where I can go find an age analysis within the application. So for example, I can go there and I've got my customer's age analysis. And I can go specify my filter options and run my report. Um, stuff, for example, such as valuation, type in valuation, and I've then got my valuation for inventory. And I can then run my report. So as you can see, very easy to use simply insert your relevant details from one central location and then find it quick and easily. Uh, same thing applies, for example, under if I want to go look for a document. So I'm on that screen, simply type in invoice and we're good to go. There's my invoice screen, simply go process the transactions and I can continue processing from one location. Right, that's a search facility. Now, we also have the ability to go and customize our grid columns within the view screen. So for example, if I go to inventory, maintenance, inventory items, I'm going to have display a range of all my inventory items there. And what I can do is I can always add different columns with relevant information onto my viewing screen. It's quite simple. Simply right click on the screen, select the customize grid columns option. There we go. And what you'll notice is we've got a smaller window appearing there. And I can simply go and specify what column I want to insert onto my screen. So for example, um, if I want to see the items are active, simply take the active column, drop and drag it onto the taskbar, and there we go, it displays all the items and if they're active or inactive on my screen. So for example, if I want to see, um, for example, let's just say quantity available, once again, highlight that field and drop and drag it onto the taskbar and I've got all my information available. Close the screen and we're good to go. Now, for example, you may want to remove certain columns from the screen. Um, once again, just go right click, customize grid columns, and then simply go specify the column you want to remove and then drop and drag it into a customization window. And can then do the same for all those columns and fully go and customize my screen. And we're certainly good to go there. So simply a case of right click, customize grid columns, drop and drag the columns you want to add into the layout. And once again, drop and drag the columns that you want to remove. So as you can see, quick and easy. Now, we also have the ability to go and specify or export this particular screen into Excel. So to do that, you notice that there's a save grid option, the taskbar, select the save grid feature, and I can then specify where do I want to go and insert or export this item to, and I can then either export it as an HTML, a TXT file, an Excel file, XML files, etc. So really an easy way just for me to go and export the processing screens from this location. Right, so what we also have the ability to use filters on these screens, 
And if you look at the bottom section of the screen, we've got almost like a little play bar where we've got the relevant options where we can move through the fields. And then we've got a filter option there. So if I click on the filter, I may, for example, have a huge number of inventory items and only want to display a certain number of items within a certain category or certain filter criteria on my screen. So it's a case of going to the filter option, clicking that button and specifying how do I want to display the items. So for example, um, I want to display all items maybe that have got a average unit cost which say, for example, is greater than, is less than 100. Average unit cost, and I can just use a formula there, it's less than 100. Apply that, and there we go. So as you can see, all those items now meet our filter criteria, which is an average unit cost of less than 100. And there my details, it tells me exactly which particular filter I'm using on that screen. To cancel the filter, simply to click on the check on the Xbox and we're good to go. So let's just say, for example, um, quantity on hand. And let's just say, for example, uh, we want to show where the quantity on hand, let's just go find that field. Uh, just, just say quantity in stock. Let's go make sure we've got the right field here. That's very important. Um, quantity on hand, there we go. And let's just say, for example, is greater than, let's just say, for example, 10. Apply the filter and there are my details. So as you can see, a very easy way I can use a filter option just to go and group my items, display certain items based on a specific criteria or formula. And what you'll notice is that um, this filter option is available on all on most screens, specifically the master file screen. So if I go in there on the customers the same option will apply uh, my list of customers, my customer master file. And once again, I can use a filter to go group my customers by certain options. And once again, we also have the save grid as well as the customizing of grid columns option where we can go add or remove columns from a specific grid. Yeah. One of the options we can go do is also under inquiry screens. So for example, if I go to my inventory, um, under inquiries, I want to go, for example, look at my transaction history, but really only go and view certain transactions for a certain date range, etc. So I've got my stock item there. I'm now going to view all the transactions, but now I just want to simply go and break down a filter by a certain field. So I'm just going to say, for example, filter that and say where I can say, for example, date equals, and then I can just use a drop down and say, only show me transactions for that specific date, apply the filter, and we're okay to go. So very easy, perhaps if you want to sort of focus or just group certain transactions by filter criteria, use the filter option, and you can see exactly at the bottom, exactly what filter you've been used to display these particular transactions very quick and easy, and a very, very useful feature within the application. Now, you can take it a step further and actually just go and apply certain search and grid options when processing transactions. So I'm going to go to my inventory transactions, and I'm going to go, for example, to invoicing, and then the invoice screen comes up. You'd normally go and specify your customer information, um, for example, invoice date details, et cetera, rep code, et cetera. And then what we have is on the line items, we're then able to take it a step further and also go just customize the lookups 
and exactly what information displays. So for example, if currently now under my options, I'm displaying an item code, a unique description and the description of the item. So I can take it a step further and simply go and right click and you'll notice is that there's a lookup field as well as a customize option. So under customize, I can either use a customize option or the shortcut F12 key. And if I go to customize, what you see with a customize lookup option here. So um, currently now, it just tells me that these three fields being item code, unique description, description are available for viewing. However, I can certainly add additional fields. So for example, I may want to add, let's just say, um, uh, let's just go find a field that will be useful. Um, let's just say, for example, quantity available. So simply tick on the box, and I'm going to use another one. Let's just say, for example, reserve quantity. And you'll see on the right hand side of the screen, we've got the up and down arrow keys. So I'm simply going to move these fields right up to the top so that when I select an item, I can also see the quantity reserved column to determine if there are any reserved units for that item. So it's a case of just using the up and down arrow keys and then going to go and process or place this particular field exactly as I want it to display. So I'm going to move the top and then let's just say move that down slightly. So there we go. And then do the same for the quantity on quantity available. So there we go. Highlight that and then move it up right to the top. So as you can see, it's a whole range of fields that I can make use of so that on my item selection drop down screen, I can specify exactly what information is going to be displayed there and I can then make use of it. So let's just say, right, there we go. And just move that down slightly. So what we're going to be having is display us the code of the item, the unique description, a further description field and the quantity available and quantity reserved. And we're just going to select that. There we go. And now simply if on the drop down, I've now got the ability to display code, unique description, description one column, and then quantity available, quantity reserved. So as you can see on the drop down, I can see this detail straight away. Um, and furthermore, is I'll just click on the drop down or right click there. I can go to lookup field and I can then just simply say, for example, show me quantity available first. And there we go. So I can just change. Um, firstly, if I've included the fields in the lookup, I can also just go and specify what sequence I want them to appear as. So, for example, I've said here, show me the quantity available first, item code, description, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. I can just go and right once again, right click, go to the lookup field and say, for example, show me maybe unique description first. And there we go. So really a very sort of customizable way that I can go and um, look on, look at fields, drop down fields, etc., and customize them to suit my own requirements. And it's simply a case of saying, Right, let's go and specify the relevant information. For example, you may not be familiar maybe with item codes, but more familiar with item descriptions. So simply just go and on the lookup, just go specify item description and use that for your searching of relevant items or processing transactions, etc. And there we go, we've got the details and process the invoice and complete the transaction. Right, so let's just go recap under your lookup fields, for example, your master file fields, just simply go to the relevant option and we can either just go right click, use the customized grid columns and either add 
columns onto the grid or simply go remove them from the grid by using a drag and drop feature. And from the screen, it's a quick and easy process of going to export these details or the screen either to Excel, a TXT file or HTML format. And then we've got that search facility, which allows me from one specific location to quickly type in a search criteria and it'll take me straight to the different options. So for example, um, let's just say for, um, fixed assets, and we can then obviously go find fixed assets details there, and if need be, go and sort of scale down the search and be a bit more specific by typing in um, more, a more detailed filter criteria. And then just on the processing screen, we do have the ability to go and customize our lookups. Right, so on the lines, on, on the line items, simply go right click and we can have a lookup fill criteria specified as well as ability to go customize the lookup screens and add or remove certain fields that we can, or that'll be displayed under the drop down columns. Right, so as you can see, a very detailed and useful search facility, as well as ability to customize your grid columns. I do hope this feature has been useful. Thank you so much for watching. It's over and out for me, and goodbye.